Today's readings come from Isaiah and Luke. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 3, and then 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the deep darkness, on them has light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Our second reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 20, from the King James. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And then when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now we're all familiar with these standard Christmas scriptures. From Isaiah we get the prophecy of, of the birth of Jesus and his inheritance. We're told that as he grows older, the weight of the world is on his shoulders. Click. There we go. <laughs> and then as he, as he grows and becomes more accomplished and gathers his disciples around him, we're, we call him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He brings us all that. We can go to him with all our needs, all our prayers, all our petitions, and he brings us peace, no matter what our needs are. All authority rests on his shoulders the broad shoulders he had. On Christmas Eve, I like to read Luke from King James because Luke gives us the best Christmas story ever. Luke's telling of the birth of Jesus is so detailed because Luke is a doctor. He, he lets us know everything that happened that night. It's like we're almost there. We see it, we feel it. In the, in the manger, we know what mangers smell like. It might have been warm from all the animals, but that wants to come to the price. We wonder, would we let our child lay there in the straw, in the smell? They have no choices. In simpler times, before we had to worry about not saying Merry Christmas, when we have to say Happy Holidays, there was a cartoon out drawn by Charles Schultz, Charlie Brown. Now, I don't like the Charlie Brown series because Charlie Brown is always picked on. He's always bullied. No matter what he does, it's always wrong. And his friends, friend of these we call him now, let him know that what he does is wrong. We look at, at the show and 
And we see Charlie Brown, he did his best. He probably felt sorry for that Christmas tree because it was mistreated like he was, stuck off in a corner. And he bought that, and he figured, this will make a great Christmas tree. But his friends didn't think so. They laughed at him. They, they talked about him. Called him, you blockhead, Charlie Brown. He had to deal with this all the time. But thanks be to God that he gave Charlie the resilience and the strength to put up with this. We don't know where, how Charlie Brown turned out. Maybe he was a physicist when he grew up. Maybe he was a doctor or a lawyer. We don't know. But we do know that he put up with a lot of junk. Even his dog sold out. If you remember the cartoon, those lights were flashing and his Snoopy's house was glowing. Charlie Brown couldn't even go home <laughs> to find peace. Because his dog sold out. As the other characters are pointing out Charlie Brown's flaws, poor Charlie Brown lets out a scream, a primal scream, and he says, Doesn't anybody know the meaning of Christmas? Charlie Brown knew. He knew that it was about a baby and a manger. And you look at that picture of Mary, and you can see the love in her eyes and the glow coming off the baby. Charlie Brown knew that's what Christmas is all about. But all his friends forgot. They thought it was about partying and dancing and, and waiting for the gifts to be opened. They didn't know it was about Jesus. They're partying, Schroeder's playing on his piano, and Lucy is just looking ignorantly at Schroeder, and Charlie Brown's just off. And then we have Linus, his friend. Linus had this blanket, and he always held on to it. Look at this. He's holding on to that blanket as, as Snoopy tears off of it. Look at the fear in his face. Part of that fear is because he's, he's being dragged across the lawn. The other part is might lose his blanket. He can't lose his blanket. Lucy tried to steal it. Look how vicious she is. <laughs> One time she tried to bury it. And the problem is they didn't know how important Linus' blanket was to him. We all have these things. We all have our blankets. Sometimes you can see them. Other times you can't. They're inside us, and they might be our egos. They might be our history. They might be glories from years past that we tell people over and over and over again so they don't forget that at one time we might have been important. My blanket was always a need to, to make more money for, for a claim, for, for just any kind of congratulation. That's what my blanket was. They don't realize that when Linus loses his blanket, he freaks out. Totally freaks out. He can't deal with it. He's got to have his blanket at all times. If he doesn't have it, he can't sleep. He can't think. He can't breathe. He's probably starting to hyperventilate. Probably takes a Xanax or two just to try to calm down. <coughs> two years ago, I was allowed into a, a public grade school <clears throat> to give a, a short reading from Luke, give a little sermon, and show a clip from the Charlie Brown Christmas. This was in a public school in Wisconsin. It was a blessed evening because that just doesn't happen. We saw the, the clip, and we're going to see a little bit of that now. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown, I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not. What just happened? What just happened? As Linus was reading the Christmas story from Luke, he got to the point where the angel said, Fear not. He 
dropped his blanket. We've seen Linus before holding on to that blanket with a death grip that he was never going to let that thing go because he needed it so badly. He can't live without that blanket. But then he reads the scripture and he hears the angel say, fear not. He's able to willingly let go of that blanket for the first time in his life. How often in scriptures do we hear Jesus say, fear not? And we know what usually happens. Things go calm. People are at peace. So Linus is, is able to willingly let go of that blanket because the strength of God, the strength of the Savior, Jesus Christ, is now in him. He doesn't need anything to fill that hole anymore. Because brothers and sisters, here's the truth. In every one of us, there's this huge gaping hole that can only be filled with God. Before we know Him, we try to fill it up with things. We try to fill it up with cars, vacations, jobs, promotions, people. We try and we try and we try. And you know what? We keep trying. Because we can't fill that hole with anything but with, without Jesus. That's the only thing that can fill that hole. Linus found that out that night. As he's reading it, God told him, fear not. You don't need this anymore. You don't need your stuff anymore. So as I was explaining this to the parents and the children, we had, we had over 60 kids there that night with their moms and dads. The film kept going, the cartoon kept going. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, and <coughs> That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. <laughs> That's what Christmas is all about. But unfortunately, some parents saw, one guy in particular, saw that Linus picked up his blanket again. And he says, look, look, he does need it. See, you're wrong. So wait a minute. We'll see what he needs that blanket for. Paul tells us in Corinthians, he says that my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Jesus told him, you don't need anything else, Paul. You've got this thorn on your side. You've asked me to get rid of it. You can have that so you can rely on me. So this dad is saying, look, look, he picked it up. See, he does need his blanket. He does need his things. And I said, well, let's see what happens. So all of a sudden, Charlie Brown is emboldened by what Linus did. And he takes this little tree out into the, the schoolyard, and he probably figures, well, if these guys aren't going to appreciate it, I'm just going to take it out to God's nature. So Linus takes his blanket that he no longer needs, and what does he do with it? He wraps it around the tree. So blessing number one is, he no longer needs the blanket. Blessing number two is he uses that blanket that he needed so desperately before and he uses it to support someone that needs support. He wraps it around that little tree and now it can stand up straight. It's no longer listing like it did before. Two blessings. The last blessing I didn't figure out until this year. I was with the, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes group at Cambridge over in the, the band room. We meet for devotionals on Tuesday mornings. And the band leader, Chris Allen, brought this out. And I said, oh, you can't bring that out now. You're going to ruin my Christmas Eve sermon. You're going to blow it for me. But then I saw one other thing that I never saw before. Because of the love of Jesus Christ and the love of the people that, that supported that tree, look at the tree now. 
It's no longer a scrawny tree with just a couple twigs and a couple sprigs. It's a full, beautiful tree. That's what happens, folks, when we allow God inside of us. We no longer need our addictions. We can get rid of them. We just toss them aside. We can use the things that we used to need to support other people. And when we bring the good news of Jesus Christ and salvation to him, it has a transformative effect on everybody. So no longer are those kids picking on Charlie Brown. They're lifting up their voices in song and hymns. And that tree is transformed too. That's what Christmas is all about. It's not about gifts. It's not about things that we need. It's about things that we give. And we've got one very important message to give tonight when you go home. When you meet your friends and family tonight and tomorrow, let them know the good news. You can find this clip on YouTube. You can walk them through it step by step. And you can show them how, how Linus needs that blanket until God tells him to fear no more. And then he uses that blanket to support his, his friends and support something that needs support. And then the transformation of the tree from a, a little scrawny twig into a beautiful tree. And let them know that's what happens. We let people hear the good news. Amen. So let's be like the shepherds that we heard about in verse 20. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. We know about salvation. We've seen the effects of God. We've seen the effects of God today in a little baby who we didn't think was going to have enough brain power to live and breathe on its own. And through prayer today, this baby's going to go home. Gosh, thanks for telling us that, that prayers are answered again. 